Oh, hello. I almost didn't see you there. This is Ben Greenfield. Uh, and I'm sipping coffee this morning, so I may take a break as I'm introducing today's guest to you. I'm drinking. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by an amazing superfood that I've now added to my. No, I'm just kidding. And I know you guys get tired of all the things you can put in your coffee. It gets dizzying. Uh, speaking of getting dizzying, the number of things that you could do to reverse the damage from uh, from cell phone radiation and EMF. Yeah, we're going to put on our tinfoil hats, baby. Uh, we're talking to Joe Mercola today, and uh, we delve into that. And it's uh, scary slash interesting slash uh, thought-provoking, as usual, as Dr. Mercola usually is. This podcast is brought to you by eHarmony, which you can't put in your coffee, but if you're trying online dating, you've probably run into dead-end conversations and random matches and lazy text messages, and uh, you can't get to know somebody just by looking at their picture. Uh, however, you can use this e Harmony website, which relies on science and data and psychological research to bring you the right matches to actually find a satisfying and meaningful relationship. Like the online dating apps can be fun to play around with, uh, but when you want to fall in love or get into true love uh, with someone and have a meaningful relationship, the one app built to bring you true love is eHarmony. eHarmony can change your life. And you can get started with eHarmony uh, and get a free month with every three-month subscription by entering the code GREEN at checkout. Free month with every three-month subscription when you use code GREEN at checkout. So there you have it. It's amazing. eHarmony. Plenty of hookup sites out there, and that is not what they are. They're different. So enter code GREEN. Free month, every three-month subscription at eHarmony.com. This podcast is also brought to you which should pair pretty well with eHarmony by Gainswave, um, a breakthrough solution for men and women who want optimized sexual performance uh, and who are getting bombarded by stress and lifestyle choices and bad eating habits and smoking and drinking and pollution. All this stuff gets in the way of a fulfilling sex life because it affects your sex organs. And what Gainswave has done is they've cracked a code on how to reverse that damage and how to increase the growth of new blood vessels and uh, get rid of old useless blood vessels it's a safe non-invasive non-drug treatment that i personally do every few months to get better erections and better sex and better orgasms it basically is just pulsating sound waves that increase blood flow that give you uh better orgasmic and sexual health and uh they do it for men and for women i've done it it works and you can get it done if you go to gains wave g-a-i-n-s gainswave.com slash ben and uh, you mention uh, this show, and uh, you go to that URL, and you'll get 30% off any treatment. Your first treatment with Gainswave, 30% discount. So check that out. All right, let's go talk about how cell phones are basically destroying our lives. In this episode of the Ben Greenfield Fitness Show... There are solutions. There really are solutions. So we don't have to not avail ourselves to the value of the technology. We can still benefit from it and not be exposed to the dangerous EMFs. 95% of the people believe that EMF in their home is coming from the outside in. It's their damn neighbor's Wi-Fi, it's a cell phone tower. Well, it turns out 95% of it is coming from inside their house. You really, really preserve and conserve your lean muscle mass when you are fasting. You're not going to lose hardly anything. And if you'll actually get more swole when you refeed. He's an expert in human performance and nutrition. Voted America's top personal trainer and one of the globe's most influential people in health and fitness. His show provides you with everything you need to optimize physical and mental performance. He is Ben Greenfield. Power. Mobility, balance. Whatever it is for you that's the natural movement. Get out there when you look at all the studies done. Studies that have shown the greatest efficacy. All the information you need in one place. Right here, right now. On the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Hey, 
Hey, folks, my guest on today's show, which promises to be yet another doozy, uh, first appeared on the very popular episode called Killing Fat Cells, Fixing Mitochondria, Growing Superfoods, and More. Uh, And then he came back as a guest, which means he must not have sucked that much, uh, on an equally popular episode, which is called High Fat Fudge Balls, The Best Fruits for Blood Sugar, Egg Allergies, and More, with the author of Fat for Fuel. Well, based on that, and by the way, Fat for Fuel was one of the most popular health books ever uh, that came out uh, well several months ago. Uh, and I'll link to that in the show notes for you guys to read, along with the podcast that I just mentioned. Uh, but if you haven't yet guessed... My guest today is Dr. Joseph Mercola. And in addition to being a very outside the box, cutting edge thought leader, a man after my own heart, and everything from freaking cancer to fat loss, uh, he also happens to be really living in the trenches when it comes to protecting himself and figuring out how to, you can protect yourself against uh, and mitigate the damages from uh, non native, harmful electromagnetic fields or emfs and i know you've probably heard the blah 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 don't hold your cell phone up to your ear but this guy takes things to a whole new level and has spent some hardcore time in the trenches figuring out what works and what doesn't everything that we talk about on this show you can find over at bengreenfieldfitness.com slash emf special that's bengreenfieldfitness.com slash emf special so Dr. Mercola, first of all, welcome back to the show. And second of all, is it true that you actually talk on your cell phone only with a selfie stick? Well, I used to. And uh, if I had uh, no other choices, that would be a reasonable thing. But what I basically do now is not, as I hardly ever use a cell phone. (laughs) You know, it's a great way to save your cell phone battery. uh, Typically, after 24 hours of, of my last after my last recharging, I still have about 91, 92 percent of my battery left because it's in airplane mode almost the whole day uh-huh. without Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled or location services. OK, so what about when you take a phone call? What are you using? I'm using I, uh, most of the time I'm at home. So I, I use a, um, a voice over Internet protocol phone, uh, which you can use. A, a Google Hangouts has one for free. Uh, so I use that. Or, or if I absolutely have to, I use this, use my cell phone on speaker and put it, lay it down somewhere as far away as I can be and still hear the person. Okay, so so you've been digging into this stuff for a long time. Because I remember the last time we were we were hanging out, you were you had like a, a meter that you were walking around with, measuring mm-hmm. things, and um, you, you had a lot of really interesting ideas, which kind of influenced and inspired me to want to get you on for this episode. But but talk to me a little bit about. Uh, why it is that that you got so interested in EMFs? Like, did something happen to you, or is this just something that that's become a, like a personal passion of yours? Well, um, it be- I became catalyzed uh, through it, but through one of my mentors, my early mentors, who have over twenty years, Dr. Dietrich Klinghart, who's been a real strong advocate of this. So, and he treats a lot of seriously ill patients from all over the world, uh, and Was refuses he like a to medical treat- physician or. Oh, he's he's an MD PhD. Yeah, he's oh. based in uh, Seattle and uh, London, and uh, he's he's really one of the veterans in the field. And I've been learn learning from him for the last twenty years, and has some pretty outrageous ideas. But he he believes in it so much that he and he's been he's in the trenches, still seeing patients, and refuses to see them unless they are going to address their EMFs because he knows by experience they will not get better. He won't actually even treat a patient unless they're going to nope. address EMFs in their environment because he knows that it won't work. It's it's too much. So that was that was part of it, and. Then, I had listened to a lecture by him early this year, and he just really hit me between the eyes, not intentionally, but I just under, finally saw the light, like I did when I read Travis Christofferson's book, uh, Tripping Over the Truth. Yeah, uh, like we talked, that's the one we talked about in the last episode about how, how cancer is a metabolic disease. Right, and then, so I understood mitochondrial function at a far deeper level, and I started to realize how EMF causes massive mitochondrial dysfunction, which is really one of the key components of that, but... Uh, since our last call, and I, I think I intrigued you, I've learned of a test that virtually none of your listeners likely know of, but it 
probably is the best simple assay to determine your mit- not only your mitochondrial function, but if you're going to die from cancer in the near future or how healthy you are. <laughs> it's really? an easy test to do. Yeah. You don't okay. have to stick your, you know, no blood test required. Well, don't leave us hanging. What is it? It is called the phase angle. And the phase angle is uh, a measurement that's done through a bioimpedance analyzer technology called BIA for short, which has been around for 20, 25 years. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what you'd use normally to like measure body fat, right? Body composition. That's correct. And determine uh, lean body mass. Uh, so it does this by applying a, a small current through your body of, of about, less than a milliamp and at about 50 kilohertz. And it measures the resistance to that current called the reactants. And reactants measures the integrity, the structural integrity of your cell membranes and the capacity to retain a charge that is generated from the mitochondria. So it'll test if you have leaky uh, membranes and um, that's called reactants. And then the the phase angle is the ratio between the reactants and the resistance. And you take the arc tangent of that and uh, get a phase angle. Now you don't have to math, the software takes care of all of that, but it gives you a simple number called phase angle, which ranges from, well, they use it in, de- in, in decimal points, 3.5, but I'd like to round it off to 35 to 100. 100 being a super athlete, under 35, you are probably dead. If your number is under 40, you're close to death. And if you're, if you're over 60, you're probably not going to get cancer if that number doesn't change. How do you actually measure this? Is this like something you could buy off Amazon? Uh, no, you have to buy. You can buy a lot of things on Amazon. I don't think you can buy these meters. Now there are a number of companies that that uh, do this test. Uh, the what the the leader in the industry is uh, RJL, uh, three letters, and they have units that are about this. That are they only weigh about a pound or so. They're highly portable. They're too big to put into your pocket, but they have four leads that come out of them. Uh, and it only takes about five minutes to do. You have to lay down. Uh, you have to take off your shoe and sock, and you put two leads on your one hand and two leads on the other, and you just okay. hit the start button, and it gives you this. And actually, types of instruments, one measures the phase, and it'll go directly to the other. actually just measures resistance and reactance, and you have to put it in the software to get the calculation. So it's called an RJL phase meter. Well, actually, bioimpedance meter. Bioimpedance meter. Uh, and, bi- and for those values that you just talked about, are there are there tables somewhere that one could look at to see whether they're in the good versus the bad zone? No, that's basically I gave you most of the parameters and okay. and actually ver- clinical variables that contribute to it would be inflammation and if, and your muscle mass. So if you don't have a lot of muscle mass, you're going to have a lower phase angle, or if you have a lot of inf- inflammation, you'll have a lower phase angle. So those are two contributing factors. But but the belief uh, from actually I. I I learned about the phase angle from someone I think you you would uh, admire and respect, Dr. Zach Bush. I was at his yeah. clinic in, in April, and they had my measure, and I was disappointed. And then I came back six months later, just a few weeks ago, and uh, it, it improved pretty dramatically from some of the things that I was doing. So it sounds it's, like it's he really, has a lot of machines at his house, because he told me he also has the one that'll do acoustic sound wave therapy for your crotch. Yeah. Uh, well, like, that, th- those are about the only two major ones. He's got some okay. solid state therapy, but he, he's not as much as a biohacker. And that's why I love your community because they really get it. Uh-huh. You know, your your group and, and Dave Asprey's gets the biohacking. And that's why you both of you have to know about this this phase angle. It is just massively important. So once once again, if people get this in measure, the, the number you'd want to shoot for is what? Well, the higher, the better. Okay. Anything over six is considered good. Seventy is great. Eighty, you're like a superstar. Okay, I you got you got to measure me, man. We're gonna we're gonna be I, hanging out you. in January. Yeah, yeah. I I can't wait to measure you. I I, I just want to see what your 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 uh, your your value is. Uh, I suspect you you might be in the nineties. <laughs> How quickly does it change though? Like for example, like you know, I'll be flying. I'm climbing Mount Kilimanjaro right before you and I yeah. see each other. I'll be on an airplane. You know, I'll, I'll have all this exposure to solar radiation, the EMF. Like how 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 much does it fluctuate? Hey, make sure you take some molecular hydrogen with that too when you're traveling. Uh, we we'll have to get you hooked up before you go because they don't want you to get damaged. But the um, it changes actually relatively slowly. It's a it's really hard to move the dial on that. It's it doesn't change acutely at all. It's not like your blood sugar or your ketone levels. I mean, this changes slowly over weeks and months. Okay. All yeah. right. Gotcha. So but you'll be um, fine. 
I mean, it'll probably might go down a little bit, but probably, I mean, especially if you're at high levels, I suspect you are. Let's say somebody's listening in and they, they measure that and it's low or they just know, right? They've, they've been spending years on their cell phone, their Wi-Fi, and their Bluetooth, and they're kind of now just realizing that, that EMS probably aren't that, that, mm-hmm. uh, that great of a deal. Um, what, what are some of the more powerful interventions that can help to reverse the damage? Well, that goes into uh, one of the other, some of the other things I want to talk about. Um, okay. And really, uh, one of the aspects of writing the book that I didn't fully appreciate until after it was published, the book Fat for Fuel, which was it, which is a good book, one of the best health books published this year, but by no means one of the best health books ever. <laughs> if, if you don't say so yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, because I, I I interview a lot of the authors, and I know was you know, and I, I know how to rank them. So I mean, that's yeah. I mean, I, I don't read as many books as you. I'm working. You are. Ma- massive inspiration. I, I can. I finally all- got defeated last night, though, uh, by by a book. Uh, Tim Ferriss sent me his his uh, what's it? Book? Tribe of Mentors, and it's like seven hundred pages long. So I took it out because that was going to be my book for the day. I made it to uh, page three hundred and eighty something, yeah. and then I fell asleep. I just I, like a occasionally a book a book winds up that I just can't do in one fell swoop. But yeah. Oh. yeah, your book did well. You, you, it was like a, uh, it was a, a, a top seller by a huge margin. I believe. Well, yeah, it was the number one book sold in the entire country for a yeah. week or two. so. That was, it, I was still, I've never had that before. But anyway, one of the things I learned after an answer to your previous question is how do you improve this? Is the most powerful inter metabolic intervention I know of and didn't fully appreciate it until earlier this year, and that is multiple day water fast. A multiple day water fast, water meaning fat. that you're fasting on nothing but water. But water and maybe some mineral supplements and some salt. It's important to have a, a good source of sodium so that you don't get intractable muscle cramps at night. But the, the two primary reasons that it, it's such a powerful tool that can radically improve your health is that it remo- helps remove something called senescent cells. And senescent cells as sort of a derivative of the word senile. These are old and aged cells that are damaged so much that they don't reproduce and multiply. And, and this could be due to the, the fact that they're just senile and old, or they could have excessive oxidative stress from things like ex- exposure to EMFs. So normally your body's able to get rid of this through a process called autophagy, self-eating, but uh, it, that process is impaired in many, many people. And the simple way to radically accelerate it and remove these, clo- these cells with their clogging up your system, impairing your health, and really increasing inflammation quite dramatically is through a multiple-day water fast. Interesting. And the other thing it does is it... it radically upregulates your body's ability to get stem cells. And you know, stem cell transplants are becoming more and more popular in the biohacking community, but they're expensive, tens of thousands of dollars typically. Um, and you're, you can do it, it for less than free. And why do I say that? Because fasting will produce similar benefits as a stem cell transplant. And it's, and it's less than free because you don't pay for food, you don't have to waste time eating. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to well, prepare the food or clean up the food. So you're saving you're saving money. Jesus for five days. and Gandhi weren't doing stem cell injections last time I checked. They seem to do okay. Yeah. Uh, now, yeah. you mentioned uh, minerals, and I interviewed Dr. Jason Fung, who wrote the Complete Guide to Fasting. We talked about all sorts of things, you know, everything sure. from like a modified bone broth fast to the minerals that you mentioned. Um, what about, uh, there, there are two things a lot of people are using during these longer fasts. I'm curious if you can still get the, the drop off in senescent cells with these strategies. What about the use of either amino acids or ketones when you're fasting? Would those reverse a lot of the beneficial effects? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Those are two excellent questions, but before I address that, let me just re- Jason's book, The Complete Guide to Fasting, is probably the single best resource anyone can yeah. have on this. Uh, and the the only addition I would add is that if you're going to do a five day water fast, and it, and you can say, well, I can't do a five day, I can do a one day or two day, you know. Well, you're not going to get the benefits, and st- the the, ba- the massive benefits we discussed until about day three. So the day four and five is when you reap the benefits. But there's so much fear around this. Now, that's the biggest thing. People are afraid they're going to go into starvation mode or they're going to be hungry. But if you're doing a 20-hour daily intermittent fast and you do that for a month, 
And I've done, because I've done five day fast for a number of times now, I'm going to start my third one right after Thanksgiving. And uh, if you're doing, and my experience is that when you, and I do 20 hour daily intermittent fast, only eating in a four hour window, typically sometimes five hours, but uh, there's no hunger on day two, which is when most Mm -hmm. people get hunger. So the hunger is just absent. So addressing your question about supplemental amino acids and, uh, and, I would, uh, and ketones, uh, and I'm, I, I know you're a big fan of using essential amino acids, and I suspect it's because you want to preserve your lean body mass. But if you discuss, I want to stay this, swole, baby. I know, but if you discuss this with Jason, I think that might be counterproductive. And I th- he has more, far more experience in this. He's really the expert in this area. But from my reading and like studying researchers like Walter Longo and San, Sancha Panda. Panda they, uh, what you, if, if you give yourself these amino acids, you're going to activate mTOR somewhat. And, and it really isn't a need for it because what you're trying to do is upregulate autophagy and you want to clear out these damaged senescent cells. Yeah. And there's no need to do that. You, you really, really preserve and conserve your, your lean muscle mass when you are fasting. You're not going to lose hardly anything. And, if, and you'll actually get more swole when you refeed, because as uh, as Walter Longo says, the magic of fasting is in yeah. the refeed. And it, well, he's got this fasting mimicking diet, which I'm not a big fan of at all. I actually interview him next week on, on it on it, but uh, but his he is expert in the value of fasting and for longevity. He's done a lot of good good science. Now, j- just uh, in my defense, uh, one thing I, I do not use is branch chain amino acids because leucine and, and no, I know le- yeah, using- leucine. That, that's a pretty potent activator of mTOR signaling. That's the one I'm pretty right. careful with. Uh, but but yeah, I I would agree that you probably are losing out on a little bit of the downregulation of mTOR signaling if you're using amino acids. For me, it's it's basically like what what an athlete would do in fasting, right? To, just just to maintain yes. a little bit of a decrease in muscle catabolism. And, and my guess is that you there's a great chance you're right for a, you know because it just depends on what your specific circumstances are. And you as a com- competitive athlete and wanting to be really careful of of not losing any muscle mass, it may be that maybe the optimum strategy. I just don't know. But if your strategy is for health, I think it is. Yeah. Even just taking essential amino acids, I think you'd. What better- about ketones? Ketones, unless you're going to compete, uh, I don't think it's necessary because actually the first time I did this, my ketone to um, glucose ratio, the index that Dr. Seafried talks about, went went up to down to 0.5. So my ketones were eight, and my blood sugar was 40. So okay. that was pretty good. Gotcha. Yeah, which is actually like two two millimoles, okay. or actually. Okay. Now, uh, so we've got a five day water fast as one thing that would be particularly helpful or or even, you know, for for people for whom that seems overwhelming. I mean, even just fasting in general, an intermittent fast or, you know, for me personally, what's doable for me is a weekly 24 hour fast. And in many cases, because I travel so much, I just choose the day like my wife and I are flying to New York. Well, if Thanksgiving dinner at about 3 p.m., for example, this podcast will likely come out after Thanksgiving. But, uh, you know, at, at 4 p.m. after Thanksgiving meal on Thursday, I'll just fast until we get to New York at like 6 or 7 p.m. the next day, right? And so for me, that's yeah, easy. Cause that's it's not great. an airplane. It was not, I'm, you know, I'm not lifting weights or like sprinting on a treadmill, so it's not that difficult. So ultimately, yeah, for those of you listening in, I mean, start somewhere. But that's really fascinating. I hadn't thought about the effects of uh, damage reversal by doing something as simple as, as just a basic fast. Fasting. Yeah. And it's less than free. (laughs) Now, uh, what else? What are some other remediation strategies for EMF exposure? Well, well, EMF is one of the primary sources of oxidative damage. And I really appreciate you having Anthony DiClemente on your previous podcast. Did you listen to that show? Oh, I absolutely did. He's another Italian. He's another Italian from Chicago. Bright guy. And really did a good job of uh, giving an overview. There's just one... uh, minor issue that I'd like to review with that was the oxidative stressor. You know, he, he, he accurately described that Martin Paul did the pioneering research in this and, and uh, you can look up his last name, P-A-L-L and type in EMF on YouTube and you'll find a lot of good lectures that really did go into great detail about the mechanism of how it works. But briefly you can summarize He, he, Anthony was a little bit mixed up on one thing, but, but essentially these EMF signals go and, and hit these voltage-gated calcium channels that are embedded in all the cell membranes, and the highest density is in your brain and in your 
your, the nervous tissue in your heart, your pacemaker. So if anyone has an arrhythmia, they've got to look at this issue. You just, you know, the answer is not to take an antiarrhythmic. The answer is to address the EMFs, the causal, causal reason most of the, most of the time. So these receptors are literally, and uh, Paul has done the, he's, he's a, also a biophysicist has a degree in that, I think from Stanford or Cal, I think Stanford or Caltech. And, um, he came up with the mechanism and showed through his calculations that these voltage-gated calcium channels are 7 million times more sensitive to EMF than the charged particles inside and outside the cells. Why is that important? Because the safety standards are based on these charged particles and that, that vibrate when they're exposed to these microwaves and cell phone signal is a microwave uh, signal, uh, and they assess thermal damage from that. Well, that they're based, basing it on the physics that is off by a factor of 7 million, 7 million. So the safety standards are only off by 7 million. And uh, here's the other thing. that the what, So what happens when these voltage-gated calcium channels are activated? Well, it allows calcium to go into the cell, and then it's not the excess calcium that causes damage. The second, that those are triggers, because calcium, intracellular calcium, is a very important biological signaling molecule. And, and, right. and when it... When that, when that is released in high doses, it causes excess nitric oxide, which combines with perioxynitrate, uh, and then that forms hydroxyl free radicals, which is like one of the most damaging free radicals. That, but that, would, be essentially, a, that would be an excess of calcium would cause that. Yes, yes. But, and but causes, you don't want to, so, and I, I'll, I'll, no, no, I don't no. want to totally derail your line of thought here, so I'll let you get back to that. But the trick is not to prevent the influx of calcium into cells. Cause I know you talked about arrhythmia, right? The influx of, of calcium into myocardial cells, for example, I, I know oh, that's, absolutely. that, it, that, uh, important. that, that prevents the, the contraction of the heart muscle fibers. You have to regulate, you know, if, if you prevent that. The way that Paul discovered this is he, he basically compiled two dozen studies on animals and in vitro studies that use calcium channel blockers and examine the effects of EMF on, on those on those tissue cultures of the animals, and they radically diminish the side effects. So calcium channel blockers mitigate the damage of EMF. Interesting. Just a basic now, calcium channel blocker that would normally be prescribed for, say, yeah. for example, like high blood pressure now, so or well, an Let's talk about some let's talk about some remediation strategies and then I want to jump into why we need to be concerned about this. So what is a natural calcium channel blocker? Because you don't want to take a drug if you can avoid it. A natural calcium channel blocker? Yeah, you know um, it. Is it. Is it? It's a mineral. Uh, it's a mineral. I was going to say strophanthus, which is the, the one I was talking about. Strophanthus is, is a drug. No, that's, that's a drug with Dr. Cowan. No, this is. Okay. Which is, has its uses, but no, this is natural, normal. Everyone needs it. And most people are deficient. In it. I would say 85% of your listeners are deficient in this, in this magnesium. mineral. Magnesium. That's magnesium. That's mm-hmm. what it is. Mm-hmm. Yep the natural calcium channel blocker. So I like to recommend that you take as much as you can, basically just short of disaster pants, and then, uh, you know, you're there. So, and and then so measure- basically what you're doing is you're decreasing intracellular calcium and, and mitigating the secondary oxidative stress that would occur from that. Well, well, yeah, you're a little more accurately, you're, 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 um, diminishing the ability of the voltage-gated calcium channels to respond to those signals. So as a secondary result of that, you'll have less calcium coming in. But ultimately, that's correct. You decrease intracellular calcium. Okay. Is there any form of magnesium that you particularly like for that, for that effect in general, like citrate or glycinate or threonate, or does it matter? I like malate. It tastes really good. And plus, it's a Krebs citric, citric acid cycle, uh-huh. TCAI cycle intermediate. So I like that. But I use a bunch. I use magnesium threonate. Uh, and about three others that I use. And yeah. I figured this out. I use Epsom salts. I make a super saturated solution. I heat up about eight ounces of water and I put it in like eight tablespoons of magnesium uh, or Epsom salts, magnesium sulfate. And then I apply it topically. And then I put a little aloe vera on top of that. So that's a good, because you, you won't get any loose stools as a result of it when you get a transdermal. I like that better than magnesium. Um, magnesium citrate? That's a citrate. It's the one that's used topically. Magnesium oil. It's a magnesium. Um, um, I'll come up with it. All right. I forget what the yeah. name is. Um, okay. So, so magnesium is, in addition to water fasting, a couple of things that you could do. Uh, what else? Well, let's backtrack a little bit and... and uh, 
ask you a question. And first of all, I want to applaud you for your pioneering efforts. You were actually ahead of the curve on this one, the, uh, mitigating against the uh, EMF. And you know, you really are have been one of the leaders out there in helping people understand this issue for a long time. So thank you for the, for that. But the reason why it's such an issue, let's talk, go back 100 years, 1917, end of World War I. There was a certain native level of EMF at, at, at microwave frequency range, say one, one to five gigahertz. So take that level from 100 years ago and compare it to the level today, 2017. How much has that level increased? And I've, I have spoken to thousands of people and no one has ever even come close to understanding the correct answer. So let me give you that as a warning. Okay, so basically, how much has EMF increased since 1917 in what, yes. in what units? Like, just as a well, percentage? It's a percentage, like 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 oh, times. Gosh, I mean, thinking about, like, cell phone towers and microwave yeah, yes. radiation and Wi-Fi yeah, and it. maybe the, the Google balloons right. that are going yeah. up there. Um, I'm going to say 1,000 times greater than what we had in 1917. You are very close. Would you be out shocked if it was a billion times? A billion's not close to a thousand. Is uh, it really a billion times? No, it's not. It's a billion billion. It's one up ten with eighteen zeros after it. How do you know? I can show you the studies. They've measured oh my it. Gosh, ten Seriously. with eighteen zeros. So it, you know, w- w- one of the strategies that we both highly recommend is to replicate our ancestral practices. And clearly, our ancestors from as little as 100 years ago were never exposed to these frequencies. So, you know, when we know from Paul's work that it has biological effects through the increasing intracellular calcium. So why would we want to be exposed to that level of radiation? So that's why I believe, and I've become passionate about teaching people about this and helping them learn how to mitigate against it. That's crazy. Okay, so a billion, yeah. billion times greater, which is actually, that's really scary, not just for us, but for the freaking, like, to the, the, eight, the cows, to the, the bees. 18. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It, it, it's the insects, it's also the plants, and it's also the bugs in your gut, yeah. which you know are radically uh, important for improving your health. Right, what, do you mean, what do you mean the bugs in the gut? How do you think they communicate? They communicate through similar mechanisms. It's absolutely impairing your gut Bi- or microbiome. You mean they, they communicate in similar mechanisms as do like bees and cows? Yes, they have similar mechanisms. Okay, please please do explain. <laughs> well, that's the, I mean, I was surprised too. I just learned about this recently, but it, but it makes perfect sense. You know, the, the, how are these bacteria going to communicate? And these, and it's not just bacteria, it's your whole microbiome, your viruses, your fungi in there. And, and there's, it's all designed to optim, to operate efficiently and the way they communicate is through these similar emf signals this emf it's been around since since the life began i mean it's, nature uses it to, for purposes in biology and one of the ways is is com- intracellular communication so you impair that when you're exposing them to this for these frequencies that's interesting you know one of the things that that I rec- i'm kind of looking into right now because i'm doing all these stories on men's sexual health you know and and sperm and semen quality and testosterone levels and all these things. And it's kind of interesting that uh, it turns out that more of these more native PEMF devices, like pulsed electromagnetic field devices, those seem to actually reverse some of the damage that EMF can do in those Absolutely. particular cells, like like the Leydig cells in the testes. Yeah, there's no question they can be useful. Uh, PEMF, uh, EMF is not... It, it intrinsically bad. It just depends the type, but most of the ones we're exposed to are, are are dangerous. Does that fall into the category of a mitigation strategy that you would use for exposure to EMF, like sleeping with one of these pulsed electromagnetic field devices or having one in your house? No, I'm not a big fan. I, you know, I tried that Delta Sleeper and it didn't work for me, but uh, there are some beneficial uses of, of question about it. I think that there's better strategies because you essentially you want to lower it. So you, the only way you're going to lower it is to know and this is what uh, is to know what the, you're being exposed to. And this is why EMF is so dangerous, because you can't see it, you feel or hear it. There's a small, yes, there's a small minority of the population, maybe as high as 5 or 10%, who are electromagnetically hypersensitive and can have symptoms. Most of us don't. Now, the interesting thing is just because you don't have symptoms as you aren't being damaged. We're, we're both being damaged just as badly, only we can't feel it. So what made it real for me is, list, is, is having meters where I can measure it. 
Now, um, Anthony had mentioned a meter that he uses, Coronet, and a number of new people into this use that. And it's okay, but it's relatively – and it's under $200. Anthony D. Clementi, the guy yes. he recommended measuring with the with the coronet. I would not recommend the coronet. I I bought most all well, the meters out there, and there are better ones to measure than that. What about this tri filled meter? A lot of people use that. No, no tri tri field is a good screen for magnetic fields. See, there's three types of fields. There's radio frequency fields, um, which is the Wi Fi signals. There's magnetic, which is de- the tri field does a decent job of doing, and then there's electrical fields. And the, the experts, and you can put a link in your show notes on this, too, if you're seriously concerned about this, and now's the time to do it, because after I write my book next year, or the, uh, 2019, the, these people, there's only 300 in the country, and you will not be able to book them for like years. But they're building biologists, and I'll give you the link for them, and you can find one, hire them, and this, they've got thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of the equipment to come to your home with, and they'll help you remediate, because it really depends. There's a lot of different variables. Now, now we're on your show Half hour, which was talked about fasting, is not enough to go into the details to help people understand this fully. Hey, I want to interrupt the great Dr. Mercola to tell you that this podcast is brought to you by Thrive Market. My children, right now, while I'm talking to you, are upstairs eating cereal from Thrive Market. And the cereal is it's amazing. It's coconut flakes and coconut oil. like It's just coconuts in their cereal. No Captain Crunch peanut butter, cocoa, puff, chocolatey, high fructose corn syrup mess for them. And Thrive Market has uh, paleo, gluten-free, vegan, raw, non-GMO, organic, even fair trade. Not just cereal, but everything. I get my nori wraps from them, my coconut wraps, macadamia nut milk, uh, like this this sprouted trail mix. Uh, Their coconut manna is amazing. And not only that, this is amazing. They give a free membership to a low-income family or teacher or military family uh, every time you get a membership. Not only that, but you also get 60 bucks of free organic groceries. Now, over at thrivemarket.com slash Ben. That's thrivemarket.com slash Ben. It's like a Costco for everything healthy. Like a giant concrete warehouse filled with healthy things instead of televisions and computers and mouthwash and uh, giant bags full of King size Snickers candy bars, which my parents used to buy me when we go to Costco when I was a kid, and uh, that's probably why I got pre diabetes, um, or at least my blood sugar is pretty messed up. So, anyway, Thrive Market isn't like that. You won't find king size Snickers bars there, but you'll find everything else that you need. ThriveMarket.com slash Ben, sixty bucks of free organic groceries now. Check them out. I've got somebody actually coming to my house. I have a building biologist coming to Perfect. my house next Perfect. month because even though I live in a relatively protected area, I do have, for example, uh, solar panels, right? There's some yeah. evidence that like the inverter and solar panels can, can produce a lot of EMF. No, there's not some evidence. They actually produce what's called dirty electricity at these voltage spikes. because And, and the, the this tragedy of it is it doesn't have to be that way because almost all the inverters do that. It's the solar inverters that's doing it. It's nothing to do with the DC electric panels that you have. It's the conversion from DC to AC that does it. So I can get you – I'm actually in the project because I have three three inverters myself. I've got about 15 kilowatts of panels. And um, – it definitely causes dirty electricity, which you can remediate with filters, but it still is best to remediate the source. So the best way to do that is put this high-frequency capacitive filter inside the inverter. And I've got the instructions from Dave Stetzer, who's a really profoundly good electrical engineer. And he actually wrote a paper in one of the – he's a – he's a um, wrote in one of the electrical journals on how to, how to remediate this. So that's the way to do it. And I, my guess is your building biologists won't know how to do that. They, you should gonna send re- that information to me. I, or I know we have some listeners who have solar panels as well, so we could put it in the show oh, notes ab- for people. Absolutely, yeah. They can, and you just have to find a really good electrician who understands this and, just, and can put it into your solar panel inverter. Each one, each inverter needs one of these signals, and it's probably only about a hundred bucks in parts, maybe a little bit more for labor to, to p- install it. But okay. what? While you're at your electrical panel, let's the building biologists, and I've interviewed a number of them, two pieces of information that's really important to share. One is that almost everyone they evaluate these homes, this is all they do full time, they consistently say 95% of the people believe the EMF in their home is coming from the outside in. It's their damn neighbor's Wi-Fi, it's a cell phone tower, oh, woe is me, How, you know, I'm, I 
There's nothing I can do. It's my neighbors. I have no control. Well, it turns out 95% of it is coming from inside their house. 95%. Coming from inside the house. Do you mean inside the house? What would it be coming from primarily? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. I'll tell you what the most most important one, the most important one. This is a surprise. I think you're doing it though. I don't know. But what do you think the most important exposure is? Your Wi Fi router. Uh, No, I don't think so. Okay. It's the electricity. At least this is what the building biologists say. Tell me. It's the electricity that's on inside your bedroom when you're sleeping. Why? Because sleep is probably the most important biological function you can do. It's probably is, is equally, if not more important, than eating and exercise. Sleep, you have to optimize sleep. And the best way to optimize sleep is to not expose your body to electrical fields. Wi Fi would be, like from your Wi Fi router, would definitely be a, an issue. But the electric fields that get generated from the wires inside your house uh, can really cause impairment of your body's ability to, to go into to deep sleep, which you, of course, can measure with the aura ring, and uh, also impair your body's ability to produce melatonin. It's well documented. Very interesting. Well, I've, I mean, when we built our house, I, I don't know if you saw that book that I wrote about this, but I, I literally had this thing like wired with metal shielded cables. Every single room has a kill switch. So as soon as you go to bed, you can kill everything Perfect. in the bedroom. You, you are so ahead of the curve, Ben. There's no question about it. It's a dead home. It's also really inconvenient because we don't have like the Amazon Echo or the Alexa. And That's fine. No, you can no live Bluetooth without it. And, we don't now have the Amazon button to remind us to order milk. None of that. <laughs> Here's the thing, too. Now, we know that if you see some, uh, something being advertised as low, no sugar or diet, that's a, that's a code name, right, for artificial sweeteners. Well, do you know what smart is a code word for? Smart? Uh, I don't know. On, on a device. It's a, it's a code word for wireless. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Smart TV. Yeah. Here's one that I didn't know about that I found as I was mitigating my own house. And you probably ha- you, I, you have it. You have it. I know you don't watch TV hardly at all. Yeah, I'll, right? I'll occasionally get like exercise DVDs people send me to review and stuff like that. So we, we have we yeah. a TV. Uh, it's on like once every couple well, you, of weeks. <laughs> well, it's not an issue for you. For most people, it is. Most people watch TV far more than that. There's no way you would read that many books if you're watching TV. But the issue is that almost all new TVs are smart TVs. What does that mean? That means that unlike your computer, your notebook or your desktop, you can, which you can put in airplane mode, you cannot put your smart TV into airplane mode. So every time you turn it on, you're braiding yourself with Wi-Fi. It's wow. the nature of the game. What do you do when you travel? Because, you know, like, let's say, uh, you know, two days ago, my boys now were coming back from San Francisco and we're walking through the airport and there's like, you know, there's TVs at every gate. They're all smart TVs and there's obviously EMF all over the place. Like what, what kind of strategies do you use when you're traveling, when you don't have control over your personal environment? Great, less control? great question. Uh, in some ways, you're a little bit better from an electric and magnetic perspective because the building code for commercial buildings requires that all the electrical wires be put in metal conduit uh, just for safety reasons and fires and things. Uh, Consequence of that, and virtually no one understands the biological implications of that, but it essentially neutralizes the electric fields coming out of those wires. So, unlike Chicago or New York, where the trade unions conspire to force the, that code on residences, which increases the cost of residential uh, installations, but has the beneficial, beneficial consequence of lowering the electric fields while they sleep at night. Here's the problem, though. So if you if you live in Chicago, New York, or you're in a hotel room like you're frequently, all you have to do to essentially eliminate, and I've tested this in about a half a dozen different hotels now, all you have to do to eliminate the electric fields and measure it with very sensitive equipment is to pull out the plugs or pull out all, anything that's plugged into the wall. Because the moment you plug something in, that field comes into the room. Mm-hmm. So, and, it, and if, if the only electric wires are in the conduit, then you're probably okay. Okay. At least it's almost every every hotel. So in hotel rooms, you just basically un- unplug just about anything. You are you wearing any kind of like? I yeah. mean, I know you do you do crazy stuff. Like, are you wearing any kind of like shields or yes, clothing? I, oh or yes, like yes. We we recently actually my building biologist uh, did me to a German manufacturer who makes this silver shielding, one hundred percent silver fabric, and you can ground this fabric so it knocks out everything. 
And I had I basically created a sleeping bag that I travel with. So I completely enclose it's, it's completely you enclosed. You created cake. a sleeping bag that you travel with? Yeah, yeah. And it only weighs like I don't know, a few ounces. It's pretty light. The how's it how's it work? Yeah, I just wrap myself in it. And, and and inside that I have a grounding pad that I sleep on and the grounding pads grounds me. So I'm it, it's the the, the the material touches me and then actually if there were any electric fields, that neutralizes because they cannot go through a grounded Faraday cage. Electric fields. So you're basically of, sleeping in a Faraday cage. Yes. I sleep in a Faraday cage at home, but it's hard to do that at while you travel, but it, that's why we made the sleeping bag. So this oh, you can you 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 actually have this bag. You can buy it on your website. No, no, no. We're we're developing it and hope to launch it oh, next okay. year. We had our team just came back from China to uh, find the best manufacturers in the world to do this because the German stuff is just so pricey. So we want to get it down to under two hundred dollars. So you just sent your people to China and told them, hey, find me a radiation blocking sleeping bag. No, it's a lot more complex than that. They have they have okay. like trade shows there for. People, the companies that make yarns and fabricators, and you know, I mean, they, 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 their main, they big trade shows there. That's what they do. So uh, we we sent our staff there, and and uh, we really want to offer solutions for people. But later this year, we'll have something because wow, I mean, and you you need one. I'll I'll get you a beta prototype when we come out with one. But you now, when I said I was it, flying, you also talked about molecular hydrogen. Yes. So the, and so, uh, j- just to interrupt you real quick, at the, at the time that this podcast comes out, I think I will have released uh, an interview that I did with this guy named Tyler LeBaron about uh, about this hydrogen-rich water. Same thing? Yeah, yeah. Tyler is the expert. I've known Tyler for a few years, and I think I'm the one who recommended him to you. Uh, I love that, man. I'm interviewing him in a few weeks myself when I go back to Chicago. But he is, he's such a nice guy. He's a, he's an athletic stud too. I don't know if you guys talked about that in your interview, but. Yeah, we did. But for people who don't know about molecular hydrogen or hydrogen rich water, how, how exactly would that work to assist with, with the mitigation from EMF damage? You know, I, I meant to, I meant to shoot Tyler an email because I don't think the mega hydrate that Anthony discussed is the same. I don't know that that's molecular hydrogen. It might be, and I might just be confused, but I don't believe it is. So molecular hydrogen works because it's a selective antioxidant. That's the key term here. It's not, it doesn't indiscriminately suppress all free radicals because some free radicals are beneficial. As you well know, you need free radicals if you want to get the benefits from exercise. And if you suppress them indiscriminately, you're going to blunt that beneficial response. So molecular hydrogen is the one to take when you're exercising to, to, to make sure you don't get excessive damage or blunt the beneficial free radicals. And it, it's believed to work. I mean, I don't think anyone knows for sure. Uh, Tyler is the best guy to answer the question, but I think this, the thinking has shifted. And it doesn't directly neutralize the hydroxyl free radicals, but it does it through a pathway called the NRF2 pathway, Mm -hmm. which uh, essentially allows your body to hormetically control it and have some feedback influence so that it's generating the the right amount of levels and you're, you know, you're not causing any damage. So it's, I think it's a really potent uh, stimulator than NRF2, which is, and and you could look up the NRF2 pathway, uh, just type that in and type Martin Paul's. He he wrote a brilliant paper on it. It's like 15, 20 pages that goes into the, the mechanisms and really goes into all, a lot yeah. of other strategies. Yeah, do, right. Like with, so with far the, the idea being that reactive oxygen species are produced after especially a high-intensity bout of exercise, and those serve as messengers, you know, speaking of cellular yes. communication, to regulate adaptation to exercise, and then they lead to a cascade of events like satellite cell proliferation and muscle adaptation, all these things that help you to get more fit. And the idea is that that excessive intake of antioxidants appears to blunt that response. So, yeah, that, that hydrogen-rich water helps to quell inflammation without blunting that same response. Uh, apparently, as you just alluded to, also helps to control the inflammation that might be generated from EMF. And you know what I was reading about yeah. last night? You'd be interested in this. The, I was just reading the, the National uh, Journal of the Strength Conditioning Association last night. A uh, very interesting article in there that goes into the research that I just mentioned on reduction of oxidative stress and how you don't want to do that. But then they looked at uh, acute consumption of what are called uh, polyphenol-containing um, supplements. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this case, mm-hmm. they were looking at things like tart cherry juice, at pomegranate mm-hmm. juice, at quercetin, and at the epigallocatechin gallate that you get from like green tea and green tea extracts. And they found that those specific polyphenol 
antioxidants do not blunt the ergogenic effect of exercise, in this case, heavy and intense strength training. So it turns out that uh, some antioxidants, and this is the first time I've ever seen research like this that shows that there are some things that you could take right after workout, uh, such as green tea, and it wouldn't blunt that same oxidative stress. Isn't that interesting? That's good to know. I think uh, the ECGG uh, improves the NRF2 pathway. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's one of the yeah. ones that does, and the polyphenols, of course. So, yeah, it's good to know. Anyways, though, a total rabbit hole, but, but you, brought up, uh, you brought up magnesium. You brought up uh, the hydrogen-rich water as well as shielding yourself. Before we leave magnesium, uh, hydrogen-rich water, you know, people will, will want to be taking it, of course. And unfortunately, at the time of this interview, there's not really good products out there. They don't exist. And I don't know if Tyler reviewed the importance of cycling it. As, as you want to do with the, the, the nutrients you just mentioned, the supplements, the antioxidants, you know, even though they may not blunt the, the response from exercise, I don't think it's a good idea to take those things every day. Everything I know suggests that's not a good strategy. Take two days a week off. You pick the day. Same thing know? with the hydrogen rich water. No, hydrogen rich water is a little bit different. I think you could take that. I might be wrong here. I don't think you need to cycle it. I would have to discuss. That's a good point, but I don't think you need to. I I take it pretty much every day. But there's a, a whole wide variety of them out there, and it's not a cheap supplement. Um, we and they are most of the almost yeah all of the ones that are currently available uh, are not grass at all. We're actually in the process of dealing with this. This guy's a savant. Right, so He's not generally recognized as safe. They're not. No. So we, we, we act, we'll have the first tablet out next year, but it's going to take another three months to do the grass studies to get it certified. So, uh, and, but the key thing is there will be some, there's just came out like in the last week or two, the high concentration hydrogen water. You want like nine parts per million or, or milligrams per liter would be a, a because most of them was out there are like two or three. There's a few that are five. And the key thing is, is you want to pulse it. Did, did Tyler go into the pulsing? No. Okay. So the, you, do, you don't want to take, drink it continuously because there's these alkaline water systems. They probably had done nothing to do with benef- the benefits of nothing to do with the, the pH of the water, but they have everything to do with their ability to make molecular hydrogen gas. But they have those those generators, even if they put out high amounts, and there's a few that do that claim three or four, maybe even five, but most of them are closer to one or even below. And it, and even if you had five, if you're drinking it all day long, you don't get the benefits. You you want to pulse it because if you take it continuously, you don't get the same same reaction. So I cycle mine two or three times a day. I take it before I go out in the sun. I do my hour, two hour walk in the sun. And I take it before exercise, and or I take it like almost every hour if I'm traveling in, in a very high EMF environment, which is you know almost always the case. You can't you can't until I and we're going to make underwear out of this too, this this shielding to protect our heart and our gonads. And the uh, you you had mentioned the infertility, you know infertility in men has gone down by fifty percent, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But EMF is probably a, a primary variable for no, uh, that. No, that's kind of cool. You're going to do underwear. One of my buddies tried to do that a while ago. I don't know if he's still in business. It was called Raparo, uh, R A P A R O clothing. I, I think he like he pivoted. He got in like the blockchain or Bitcoin or something like that. But for a while, he was yeah. he, he. I have a pair somewhere around here. He had like boxers that, well, that shield against EMF. What is, Here's interesting. In China, the st- standard, the standard of care is pregnant women are wearing these shields around their bellies to protect their infants. Wow. That is, like, you get them everywhere. That, that, that's just common knowledge. That's what you do in China. Yeah. Well, in America, the moms are playing Candy Crush with their phone on top of their belly. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And even worse, their kids, their teenagers, their, their six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds are sleeping with their phone on under their pillow at night. Yeah. Ugh. So my, I mean, it's you know, crazy. My, my, they're, kids, they're not, they're not. my kids have an eye touch. And I, you know, as I do with, with my own children, uh, I never tell them not to do anything. I mean, unless they're about to right. like, step out in front of a semi truck. But they, uh, the eye touch, all I tell them, you know, they, they, they are well aware, more aware than most adults of the damaging effects of Wi Fi and Bluetooth on cellular function and the concept that the body is a human battery, et cetera. And so they simply know when they have their eye touch on that they put it in airplane mode. I, I was actually speaking of us on the airplane. Um, my son was sitting next to me on the airplane uh, two days ago, coming back from San Francisco, and all of a sudden he goes, <gasps> and I said, what's, what's wrong? And, and he's looking at the iPhone, and, and it's kind of like sitting there on the seat in between his legs, and he points at it, and the, the Wi-Fi was on. He's like, 
oh my goodness, I didn't realize that. Uh, Do you think I'm going to be okay? And I was like, yeah, you'll, you'll, yeah, that is so I'm good. Like, I mean, that is, you'll be all right. Let's go ahead and switch so it off. It's rare to find a parent doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but again, yeah, like, it's, like I don't it's, tell it's, them, oh, you know, shut that off right now. Instead, I just basically inform them and, and they'll occasionally turn it on. I think he had it on because he was trying to see if the airplane could, could feed, uh, like, a, like entertainment or something mm-hmm. into the, into the eye touch. But, anyways, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Now, you, you, um, and, and, oh, go ahead. And there's some, there's some suggestion that intermittent exposure, you know, if, if your relative exposure overall is really low, like yours and your family appears to be, may actually be hormetically beneficial. Right. It's, it may it's actually, like a lot like of these exercise. areas on the planet Earth that are like geomagnetic fields that generate, say, like a thousand hertz for, you know, a lot of people think all the Earth does is it emits this natural magnetic frequency of 7.83 hertz, you know, the Schumann resonance. But in fact, you find everything from three hertz up to several thousand hertz generated by the Earth's natural geomagnetic fields. And so it makes sense that, that exposure to slightly higher amounts. I interviewed a guy named Dr. William Pollock about this. We had we had a discussion about EMS oh, sure. and geomagnetic fields. And um, I'm not sure if that one will have come out at, at the time that folks are listening into this. But either way, you know, it's, it's not like you're not supposed to get exposed occasionally to slightly higher hertz frequencies than you might experience, you know, when you're when you're sleeping or when, when you're say, you know, using like a, like a grounding or an earthing device. But the idea is just like sunlight, right? It's, it's that constant exposure, like cold thermogenesis. I have, I have one client who I coach and he's, he's, uh, he's probably listening. He knows who he is. Uh, he's, he keeps on sending me these emails. He's like, can I do, can I do three of the cold baths each day you know he's in these ice baths for and i'm like no you're gonna you, you get to a certain point where you're stressing yourself out too much right or, or you, you have you know too too much hormesis uh if that's even something you can do so so anyways yeah i'm, I'm completely on board with you that that i i talk on my phone i get exposed to some of these frequencies sometimes but the important thing is to use some of the remediation strategies that you're talking about now have you um have have you uh filled me in on everything that you would do for remediation because you talked about magnesium and the hydrogen and the shielding well we, we talked about the meters and I, and I think it's a really important probably the most important thing that people can do is get a meter that they can measure this and for you know the professional meters that the building biologists will use are cost a few thousand dollars each but you can get one and i've measured i bought about a dozen of the different ones out there so i this is experienced and, and i actually own the professional ones too so i can compare them to them and the best there's there's two meters that I would recommend. Actually, both made by the same manufacturer. The first one is is from a really hard to find website. It's called Amazon, and the the, na- the, the name of the meter is called Acoustometer Two, and it measures radio frequencies. And uh, I think you saw me use it when we were at Dan Pampas. That was an Acoustometer Two. It has an audible signal yeah. that is actually able to reflect the t- because it's an analog signal. It will tell you what type of signal that is coming. Is it a Wi-Fi signal? Is it a cell phone? You know, but it go, the lo- the more exposed you are, the louder it gets, and the higher up it goes to this flashing red. You know, so that one you can go in your house and other hidden. It'll help you find other hidden sources. Well, uh, well let me there's just the other meter. The other meter is called the PF5, and that's at a, uh, uh, that is isn't it's called Safe Living Technologies, but they use the initials SLT dot co not dot com. And you can just look it up there. This website also has the remote cutoff switch that you can use that you have installed in your house. It may be a different brand, but this is from Gigahertz Solutions, which is a really high-quality German manufacturer. And you just have to install it, but then, then you can put the remote cutoff if, you, if you're if you committed to turning off your electricity at night, which I think you should be. But then if you did that, then you can get the PFI, which measures the electric fields and the magnetic fields. And it does it very accurately. It, it does, it's not a digital one. It's not an analog like the tri-field. But it will tell you the right numbers. This this is spot on. Trifield can be off in a number of circumstances, but it's if you have one, it's good screen for magnetic. I mean, it, it, I found it to be pr- fairly reliable. I just wouldn't peg it for being accurate. Is is the two thousand dollar meters or gigahertz. or you just basically uh, get connected with like a good building biologist who could come over building biology kind of equipment. Yes. Okay. Is there is yeah, there like they, a directory of good building biologists that there, you're familiar with? Yes. There, there's a there's a link. I'll send you the link. Okay. So that you can have great. It. Now, uh, so like those are the the meters that are key. Uh, and speaking of links, I can also send you a link because I've. I, I think we can get your listeners a discount on if if they are interested because you have a health professionals who would definitely like to get that phase angle. I think the normal they have two versions: one that measures the phase angle directly, the other that requires software. One's like twenty six hundred, the other's like two thousand. But I think you can get them a ten fifteen percent discount. 
That'd be so, interesting uh, if there was some kind don't, of an don't, algorithm don't, that could correlate uh, the data that you get from one of these normal bioelectrical impedance devices that you just hold onto at a gym, or like the Withing scale that measures bioelectrical impedance, and somehow uh, give you phase angle based on that. Uh, I don't know if any kind of algorithm. Yeah, exists, well, but. they're they're really specific about measuring a standardized con, uh, position, so you have to be laying down for a few minutes, and uh, you know, so everything's standardized and calibrated. Because if you're standing up, the measurement's going to be a little bit different. Your body water concentration is going to shift a little bit. Yeah. But it, it's the nothing. Nothing's more powerful to measure total over body health as as as, as I understand it right now. Fascinating, it's incredible, fascinating. Is there anything else that you wanted to delve into when it comes to EMF that you've learned lately, or that you think people should know? About? Yeah, let me tell you some. Let me tell you some of the other hidden sources. We talked about uh, the smart TV, which is what people know about. Sure, but most people, when they're using a keyboard or a mouse or a, tr- a trackball, they're wireless. That's going to uh, definitely be an issue. Now, you, and you you may have this issue, like I did. You're, you're hooked up to the internet, right, through your Ethernet cord. Yeah. But did you check your computer to make sure that it was in airplane mode, your desktop computer? You mean that the Wi-Fi's off? Yeah. Because it's still... Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, yeah, so you yeah. got to do that. Yeah. yeah. You got to yeah. do that. You yeah, you, you can't just plug it in. Otherwise, it's still constantly searching for a Wi-Fi signal. It's the same thing with the, with the new iOS on the newer iPhones, for example, you can't just swipe up and uh, disable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. That uh, does not disable them. You still have to go to settings and manually disable right. uh, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. Otherwise, it stays on, even if you even if you use that shortcut to disable it. So, I'm not sur- yeah, these devices are tricky. They're smart. Yeah, and I, and I even have one in my house that annoys me. There is no way to disable the Wi-Fi on a treadmill. I have oh. my treadmill in my garage, well, but yeah. you can There is no option to a treadmill will always. Not only is a treadmill a big source of electrical pollution, anyways, which is why the one that I use in my office is a manual treadmill. Uh, it's called a true form, not a uh, not a uh, mechanical treadmill. For the same reason that my stand up desk is a manual hand crank stand up desk, not a push button stand up desk, because uh, I just try to keep as little electricity in my office as possible. But the one out in the garage is just freaking. Anytime I'm out there, it's just got a big old Wi-Fi well, signal. Let me tell you, you no way to it. It. Yesterday, yesterday, I got my delivery and instructions from Peter for the, with the Vasper, which you've been exposed to. I think you even interviewed him. But he was at my house yesterday. He's actually at Tony Robbins' house today installing one. But uh, when we, when I, I, of course, I measured the EMF on it. Was shocked to find with this really good uh, gigahertz meter that it had 200. Uh, volts per meter on the chair and ne- even when it wasn't plugged in and it's still a mystery to me why it's so high but i've got i got this silver fabric right they talked about earlier we put it over there and grounded it and the, and it went down to like four volts or even below four volts i mean it was crazy but you, you put you put the you put, you put it around it underneath i put it underneath right and it, you could do the same hmm. thing all you do when you take one of these meters you find where the source is and then you can remediate it with the silver cloth Fascinating. Yeah. So you, right, there, cool. there, there, there are, yeah, there are solutions. There really are solutions. So we don't have to uh, not avail ourselves to the value of the technology. We can still benefit from them and not be exposed to the dangerous EMFs. Yeah, I think that's the big takeaway for people from this episode is that the goal is not to become a luddite necessarily. Even though I, I do know some people who are or healthy and successful who, who still have landlines and don't use the internet that much. And they are also people, however, who unlike say like you, Dr. McCullough or me don't make their living on the internet or make right. their living by, you know, traveling frequently. So we're kind of fighting an uphill battle, but ultimately, you know, my, my wife's a perfect example, right? She spends all day long out in the garden and yeah. outside. She flips on her computer maybe once every couple of days uh, if you try to call her or message her on her phone, uh, you're rarely going to get through because she just never pays attention to it. And she, as a result, uh, you know, she goes to sleep at night and she doesn't use any sleep devices. She just closes her eyes and falls asleep. And she she's super healthy. I've tested her her blood and and it's 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 flawless. And you know, and I'm sure a big big part of that is because of that lifestyle. Love this ear phase angle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know it's probably a lot better than mine. Um, and and uh, like I mentioned, for those of you listening in, I've also been taking notes as we talk, and I'm I'm putting links to everything that we talked about when it comes to these meters yeah, and just, Dr. Just two more items or everything. Might, yeah, might let's, let's go over. Let me give people the URL real quick, and then keep okay. going. It's BenGreenfieldFitness.com/slash/EMF special. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, the, 
Two other things that many people may be using not be aware of the danger, and I'm sure you're not one of them, are an electric shaver, even though even if it's, if it's a battery, it's still, or your electric toothbrush. Both of those things, you know, you want to have your uh, magnetic fields below one milligauss, ideally even 0.1. But these things put up like thousands of milligauss, thousands. But it doesn't, it's not that much of a problem though, because you're only putting it next to your brain. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So the electric toothbrush and the electric razor. Yeah. They're both like in your mouth and up by your head. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you would definitely want to go manual on those, you know? Okay. Got it. Got it. And what was the other thing? The, the, both of those. Or, the, the, or, the, the, or the, those are the two main things. Okay. So yeah. the shaver and the toothbrush. All yeah. right. Well, fortunately, I, I I'm pretty old school on both of those. Yeah, I know, so I know, I know. I said yeah, you got you got it covered. You you you're, you're, cool. you're really one of the rare health guys out there who understood this. You're an early adopter, and you really figured it out. And I know your audience appreciates it too. So that's I'm. I figured really, out a while ago. You can't you can't bench press your way out of an unhealthy lifestyle. No, no. As much as I thought that when I was a, when I was in my <laughs> foolish youth. No matter how good you look in spandex. Yeah, it's always a pleasure talking, and I really look forward to connecting with you at CalJam, so and yeah, measuring man. your phase angle. That's going to be good. I can't wait to hang out and measure phase angles together. Just be careful. Don't get injured off of Mount Kilimanjaro, man. We want you back yeah, healthy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I'm doing all this stuff. It, it, it sucked to get my leg trapped under a boulder and die in a mountain. Yeah. Well, at least I, at least I, I would do so without the EMF cancer that everyone just learned about. So, uh, so again, <laughs> folks go to Ben Greenfield slash E M F special to access the show notes. My previous two episodes with Dr. Mercola, everything that we talked about today and to leave your comments, your questions, your feedback, any other tips that you might personally have discovered, leave it all there. Ben Greenfield slash E M F special. Thanks for listening in, and until next time, I'm Ben Greenfield and Dr. Joseph Mercola signing out from bengreenfieldfitness.com. Have an amazing week. You've been listening to the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. Go to bengreenfieldfitness.com for even more cutting-edge fitness and performance advice. 